All right, welcome to my video. My name is Echogen. We'll be going over the second boss in Skybreak Spire, known as the Nightfall Generals. This recording is when we cleared Boss 2 for the first time, and with the recent changes to 24 Man BT, uh, Boss 2 was hardly touched in terms of nerfing. So the mechanics and explanation will still be relevant. Uh, this boss fight has two major mechanics, which is the outside and soul space. It's easier to cheese the mechanics for soul space. To cheese it, you need at least six people of your strongest all in one party and provided each person can deal 60k dps minimum then it'll work since you have 90 seconds before you all die in soul space now before we jump into the mechanics we need to understand the layout of the map and how this fight revolves around it so don't mind my uh shitty uh drawing here i did on ms paint um so in this room you'll notice there are three areas with a large circle accompanied by three smaller circles. Each party will have their own tank and each party occupies their own gray circle. So for example, party one could be in the seven o'clock circle here, uh, party two could be in 12 o'clock, and then party three could be in four o'clock. And that leaves one party behind, which would be party four. So in the middle here, the star represents the boss and the heart symbols are the party members for soul space once everyone's ready. So it's very important that this exact formation here is maintained um, for the people to enter soul space correctly. So you pretty much need you know two people at 12 o'clock, two at seven, and then two at four. And if any of these six people are you know a summoner or a warlock, uh, make sure you do not engage the boss with your pets or your thrall as they can be sent into soul space. So that would mess, mess up the uh, soul space mechanic. So when the soul space group moves towards the boss, uh, he'll pretty much disappear. And there'll be three mini bosses, which uh, they'll merge from that center and then they'll jump to their respective colors. So the yellow boss, he'll jump to the seven o'clock circle. The green boss will be at the 12 o'clock circle and then the purple boss will be at the four o'clock circle, circle. So it's important that the people waiting out here in these circles on the outside, you do not hit these colored bosses yet until the, the people in soul space have been marked. So everyone has to stay in the gray circle except for the tanks. And then pretty much for the entire duration of this boss fight, uh, each boss will stack their own colored debuffs on us. So these stacks pretty much damage, damage us over time, and at 30 stacks, we automatically die. So after some time, the bosses will attempt to heal, so you must knock them down. The healing animation is exactly the same as the Tykin boss in uh, Shattered Mass. So knocking the boss down will cause them to jump to their next respective color. So for example, if I'm at the 7 o'clock circle here, so I'll be fighting the yellow boss, He'll attempt to heal, we knock him down, then he'll jump to the 12 o'clock circle. And then same thing there, he'll eventually heal again, we'll have to KD him, and then he'll jump to the 4 o'clock yellow circle, and then back to 7, and then he just keeps going in a clockwise position. So the green that starts at 12, he'll go to 4, and then 7, and then back to 12. For the purple boss, he starts at 7 o'clock, or sorry, 4 o'clock, and then he'll go to 7, and then 12, and then it just, it just keeps going in like a clockwise position there. So I'll go back to the video and pretty much go over what I just explained. So you can see that each party is in their uh, circle. So we have a party in seven o'clock, 12 o'clock, and four o'clock. And everyone remains in that gray circle. Now, so now the soul space party are now engaging the boss. So they're coming from those specific directions. So there's two from 12 o'clock, two from seven o'clock, and then two from four o'clock. So the boss is not gonna disappear. And now these colored bosses are gonna spawn and then jump, jump to their respective colors. So remember, do not hit the bosses yet. Okay, so now it's safe to hit the bosses. So as a tank, it's very important that you tank the boss facing away from the party. 
because of that attack right there. So the, the boss is going to do like a water spray attack, which is an AoE, and you do not want that facing towards your party. Alright, so that animation right there, that is the healing animation that's attempting to do. So it's very important that you KD this boss. It must be a knockdown. It cannot be any other CC. Now when the boss recovers from the knockdown, it is going to... It's, it's an attack that's unblockable, so you have to iframe it as a tank. Alright, so now the bosses will jump to their next respective colors. So... When the yellow boss jumps to 12, he's going to pull me with him. And then the party at 12 o'clock here, they're responsible for stunning him to break the grab. So a stun must be used here. And after the bosses are stunned, do not like grab or aerial or pin them or anything like that. Do not do any of that. So the tanks pretty much move with their boss that they started with. But the party that you know started in their designated circles will remain in those circles. All right, so there's the healing animation. So we're gonna like, knock him down. He's going to jump back up, and then he's going to jump to the 4 o'clock yellow circle, and he's going to pull me with him. So do not avoid this pull, so don't iframe it or use Hong Moon, Hong Moon block or anything like that, because you have to let him pull you. And you got to remember, of course, the party there is then responsible for uh, stunning him to break the, uh, the grab. And that's pretty much all you do on the outside, is you literally DPS the boss, They'll attempt to heal up, you knock them down, the next boss will jump to your circle, they'll pull the tank, they'll grab the tank, and then you stun to break the tank out of that, and then repeat. That's all you do for the outside. So as far as soul space goes, um, the mechanics for soul space can be disregarded if you're cheesing it. Uh, as, as I mentioned before, all you need is 6 people who have at least 60k DPS or more, and all I have to do is constantly stun lock the boss in soul space when his CC bar is, is open. And then provided you have all that, you, then you'll be able to kill him within 90 seconds. And that's all you do for the cheats. And that makes this boss fight a lot easier. Now, once the soul space boss is dead, then those six people can then just go back to their original parties. It doesn't really matter where they go to. And even if the bosses on the outside here are at one HP, you still have to do the mechanic. You know, you still have to knock them down, you still have to CC them. And the bosses on the outside all have to be at one HP, and the, and the boss in soul space has to be dead in order for this to move on to the next uh, phase. All right, so once those conditions are met, so the bosses on the outside all have one HP, and the soul and the soul space boss has been killed, this main boss will now reveal himself. So once he's spawned, make sure everyone is away from the center, like before that. Um, if anyone is dead near him, just leave him there or get a soul fire to res and pull them over. Otherwise, uh, just wait for everyone's buffs to be pretty much be refreshed before you engage this boss. Uh, this boss has no mechanic, but he has a 60 second enraged timer. So if, let's say, you accidentally trigger this boss before everyone's ready, then you might as well jump in and, and kill the boss, because if you fail to kill the boss here, you have to do the whole thing again. So pretty much we're just making sure our one's all resed up. Uh, all buffs are ready, like Soul Burn is ready, Blue Buff is ready. 
once that's ready, you just coordinate, just all rush in at once, and then burn him down as quickly as you can. Uh, you don't have to CC him, but you can. Alright, there we go. So that is how you do the mechanics for boss 2 of BT. Uh, as I mentioned before, the nerfs for 24-man BT, uh, they have not really touched this boss very much. Uh, the only thing they changed was that they reduced the recovery debuff um, from from 2% down to 1%. So that's the only, the only change for 24-man. Uh, for 12-man, I believe it will be the CCs and the health that will be reduced. So thanks for watching. I hope that helps.